Welcome back to New Rock Stars. This is the big question. It's a podcast that gives you too much information about how the real Snyder Cut is the one that nicks an artery and causes death. I'm Eric Voss. With me is Zach Huddleston. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing great, Eric. It's good to be back. Um, Blue Dungeon adjacent. Yes. And uh, uh, I won't try to read too hard what secrets you have written on your cards in the background. Our editor, hopefully in post, will put in other offensive things that we'll blame for. <laughs> Most of these are offensive to the editors. <laughs> All right. Well, we are in the middle of DC week here at New Rockstars. Uh, we did breakdowns of Man of Steel, Batman v Superman. We got coverage of all the big updates from DC's fandom coming we know we just got some big news about the snyder cut robert pattinson's a batman we're so excited the breakdowns of all that will be coming out over the next couple days on the channel keep an eye out for it today zach and i are going to explore one of the more contentious points of zach snyder's vision for this world the insanely high body count superman in these movies literally sinks into an ocean of skulls batman gets his organs ripped out by homelander superman now sure both of these you could say are dreams but are they dreams? Are they? <laughs> we never really get confirmation of what he was going through in the nightmare sequence, whether that's the future or the dream. I'm afraid. I'm scared. <laughs> we should be. I think that was what was intended by Mr. Snyder. He wanted to scare us yes. pantsless. He's just standing there menacingly. Or for some of us, scare us shirtless, but you're not getting a look at my chest hair, Mr. Snyder. Now, look, I don't want us to look like we're two little snowflakes who get triggered. Like, I don't get too mad, really, when it comes to Snyder's choice to have his Batman and Superman kill. I get it. It's like, it's his vision. It's his variation, the DC theme. As long as it's like mostly justified by the situation, which they usually are. Like, it was totally justified for Superman to kill Zod in that scene. I get it. But it's still super fun to talk about across these DC EU films between these two characters, who's more responsible for more deaths? So, Zach, the big question's coming your way this week. Who has killed more people, Batman or Superman? in Zack Snyder's DCEU. Okay, and yes, we are limiting this just to the DCEU, Man of Steel, Batman vs. Superman, and Justice League. So don't come at me with Batman Returns, he shoved a bomb in a giant clown's pants and threw him off a bridge, okay? We know <laughs> there have been some maybe kills in both these characters past. And obviously in the comics, there's so many issues and so many variations. So we're limiting our scope to the more recent DCEU. And I'm also gonna talk about not only the kills that happen in those movies, but like put them into three different categories. A direct kill, right? Pink mist. Uh, I shoot you, I punch your head off, whatever. An Pink indirect mist. kill, or maybe the actions of our hero led to somebody dying, even if not directly. Oh, uh, okay. And then a death by inaction. They could have done something and they chose not to, thus letting somebody mm. die, okay? And maybe we'll, we'll weight okay. these things differently because they are, they're morally kind of different deaths. Yeah. Well, I mean, once you've taken those lives, it still weighs on the soul the same way. Having done all three, I can tell you from personal experience. <laughs> Gabe? Uh, Drew? Philip? Zach, you're next? <laughs> what? <laughs> I haven't seen Marina in a week or two. Um, okay. Let's start with our main bat boy, Batfleck. Ben Affleck in the, in the Batman appearances, uh, starting with Batman v Superman, um, our first time seeing him. We see him with this whole like branding the criminals thing, right? Yeah. When he catches the guys, he gives them a brand, which I gotta say, strategically, because the DCEU version of the bat symbol is so just like amorphously rectangular, I don't know how effective those brands are. Somebody could be like, oh, uh, you're into rectangles or rhomboids? <laughs> you know? yeah. Oh, you're walking to a cattle poker at one point? <laughs> yeah. I got yeah. one too. There's uh, vaccine scars that are kind of worse than some of those brands. But regardless, yes. we find out that when some of these branded criminals go to jail, they get killed for having those That's brands. That's right, they're targeted. And and it's yeah. a mixture of, we find out Lex Luthor is paying criminals, shout out yeah. uh, Long Beach legend C.T. Fletcher pays, uh, plays the um, <laughs> shiving uh, criminal. And also maybe just kind of like the way that certain criminals like child molesters are treated in actual prison, right? Or, or, or snitches. It's talked about that um, 18 criminals have been branded and we see at least two of them die. So we could maybe uh -huh. assume 18 ish criminals have died indirectly because of Batman. Potentially, yeah. 
and his and his hot blade there, hot knife and all these dudes. <laughs> okay, so that, there's that, but that's indirect. He didn't mean for those people to die. He just wanted them to be permanently scarred and to suffer greatly. Also, indirect or possibly in action. So we know that this universe, there is a dead Robin. At least uh, yeah, one. Or, or Probably it. maybe a Jason Todd and a Dick Grayson. But yeah. we see the graffitied up uh, costume. And so we don't know how that happened. We can assume the Joker killed him or them in that Batman either wasn't able to stop them through inaction. Maybe the inaction of not killing Joker, ironically. Or indirectly by letting this guy or guys uh, fight crime with them. Or children. <laughs> yeah, or children. Tweens. Teenagers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Can you imagine how insane it would be to have like a 13-year-old sidekick? I mean, the movie Kick-Ass did. But. So, two more deaths on his ledger, possibly in action or indirectly. Now let's get to some direct kills. Uh, as you mentioned, that nightmare sequence. Desert camo Batman. He's He's got no more cape. He's mm -hmm. just got like a cowboy slicker on. <laughs> And he is machine gunning fools. <laughs> machine gunning vaguely Nazi <laughs> uh, Superman acolytes. So there are parademons yeah. in the background there, but most of the soldier guys that Batman is shooting don't appear to be parademons. They are masked, but they appear to be humans. But it's also implied that parademons might be like transformed, you know, higher intelligent creatures. It might be people who have been like transformed into parademons. There's definitely some grounds there that like killing a parademon is also taking a life. Yes, because you know what we never find out? Can those parademons be rehabbed, right? That's After right. they've paid no their debt- No one ever asked that. <laughs> no, nobody's asking these kind of hard questions here. After those parademons have paid their debt to parasociety, why can't they read para join us? Again, we estimate just based on gunshots and bullets that seem to connect, he kills about 12 people, 12 humans in okay. this sequence. But of course we find out it's a dream or a nightmare, if you will, right? So these don't yeah. count unless this movie is, it kind of plays with this idea of like, or is that a vision of the future? And, and I don't know about you, Eric, I don't normally um, dream about murdering a dozen soldiers, do you? No, I dream about the first half of senior year still trying to finish my extended essay and my other ID <laughs> essays that I had to write. And for some reason, friends from college are there. And then um, the hosts of the talk for the job I used to work on are my teachers. Yeah, I, I still, up until about two years ago, I still had the nightmare of it's the last day of the semester and I've never been to a single class and I haven't studied and now I have to take the final. Yeah. But now I think that shifted to it's five minutes before a Rogue Theory episode and I don't know how a spider <laughs> Man 3 is going to unfold. It's the same thing. School never <laughs> ends. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'm not going to count the nightmare kills, and this isn't the last time we're going to talk about Fair. that nightmare sequence, but because it's technically a dream, we don't get confirmation, I'm not going to count those on Batman's ledger. Who I am going to count are those uh, bad guys in the port chase sequence. Yeah. We literally get to see a couple of those dudes get their heads caved in. <laughs> so he machine guns a bunch of guys. He lands the Batmobile on top of some guys. He crashes through some dudes. All kinds of mayhem and carnage here. It is direct and it is purposeful. He is not uh, setting his phasers to stun. Yeah. He's straight up shooting no. dudes. I mean, they're shooting at him. I'm not, we're not saying it's not justified, but you know, other Batmen have tried to find ways to not kill people. This one's just like, Nope, they're going down. Judge, jury, executioner, just like Superman uh, was worried about, right? Again, yeah. we don't know yep. how many of these bad guys were like Dennis Haysbert's character in Heat. They just got out of the pen. <laughs> they're trying to go straight. But you know what? Being a shoulder <laughs> cook is hard. Okay, That's and right. sometimes your old your old crime buddies wave a big payday in front of you, and you do one last job, and maybe that last job was down at Gotham Port, whichever <laughs> port that was. Yeah, and you get yeah. shot to death by uh, a, yep. a billionaire. <laughs> okay, so how many people died of that okay, one? Okay, so we counted it up. It seemed like about 13 people, right? You can't always tell how many oh, people wow. in some of these okay, cars yeah. that are getting flipped. But it seems like a good baker's dozen worth of bad guys. <laughs> and then, last but not least in this movie for Batman, the most graphic 
uh, and visceral, right? That warehouse fight where he's going to save oh, yeah. uh, Martha Kent, right? We see him slam dudes' heads into the ground, like leave blood smears on the walls when he like slaps guys. <laughs> yeah. I mean, my favorite, when he does that with the, uh, he hooks the box and throws the big crate at the guy. I mean, call yeah. him mailman because he delivers. Know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I mean, that's a postal service that'll never get defunded. I love this whole video. <laughs> Subtle political uh, commentary. Yeah, um, it shouldn't be political. That's what's crazy about it. Absolutely. Dude, it's the mailman. <laughs> <sighs> Moving on to Justice League. Okay. The the only other time we've seen Batman in the DCEU. And not including Suicide Squad. But I don't Correct. think he actually, we saw him kill anybody in Suicide Squad. In fact, he, he kind of almost got beat up by non-powered uh, Will Smith, right? Uh, yeah, for the sake right. of not embarrassing in front of his kids. His daughter uh, saved that billionaire's <laughs> life. <laughs> yeah. And in fact, he, he saved another life right because he saves uh, harley quinn's life yeah he saves harley quinn joker you think he killed but you can't kill that joker he's gonna get going back so in justice league that opening sequence right where he uses the criminal to kind of lure in a parademon and then kind of tacks the Mm. parademon to the wall i'm not it's an indirect kill i'm not gonna count it on batman's ledger because technically the parademon like self-destructs Right, he kind of just immolates while being stuck <sighs> to the wall. Yeah, fair. Because uh, Batman helps him along in that process, but really he was trying to get information from that parademon. You could argue he he wanted that parademon to stay alive longer to to try to find out what the whole motherbox conspiracy was about. And presumably, this is one of his first interactions with the parademon. He doesn't know that you know they're like a, a shark out of water and they'll die instantly the second they can't fly or something, right? <laughs> um, so you could forgive him for that, but. Speaking of parademons, right? We have that tunnel sequence, the water tunnel yeah. under Gotham, right? He he seems to kill directly six parademons in that sequence. Okay. Now, that's a good question. Again, are parademons, are they humans? Now, in, in our series no, of killing... Well, they're not humans. Well, or I guess, like, does it count as a death? Are they intelligent life? We don't we don't know. Like, have when you are converted to a parademon, is your life over, right? Is this like a walking dead question where like when you see your ex-wife now as a zombie, A, is she, are you still legally re- required to pay alimony to her, right? Or <laughs> are you still kind yep, of in, in love California, with her? yes. <laughs> yes, in California. <laughs> yeah, and so like, we don't know. Also, because, you know, uh, Steppenwolf is, is not just bound to the realms of Earth or whatever. These parademons could be aliens that were converted. Or they're like, you know, you, know, you could argue they're orcs that are just bred on the planet apocalypse either way you know in lord of the rings orcs are intelligent life they're not that smart but it's a life that you take if, if uh, gimli and legolas count them i think we should count these parademons <laughs> okay i'm sold you know what we need to expand our views count more things as living creatures or or sentient mm-hmm. creatures right i'm all for it so he killed six sentient creatures there <laughs> these are parademons yes. with <laughs> wives and kids and you know they're parts of book clubs um okay and then um in that final big battle where everything's red and they're in the weird Russian town, right? Uh, he seems to have killed about 25-ish direct parademons okay. in that sequence, right? He steals one parademon's gun and kills a couple. He lures a bunch into a building when he's in the Batmobile and then the building kind of blows up on him, right? There's some creative ways. Uh, I would say it's probably not as deadly as Wonder Woman, I feel like, was the MVP of that battle. Sure, yeah. Wonder Woman, Cyborg, Aquaman, they kill way more. That's one thing I liked about this final, one thing I liked about this final <laughs> battle is like, Batman really struggles with these things. It's it's not like Chitari where they're just mowing him down with a single body slam. He like, once they jump on his car, he's like, oh shit. Like he, he doesn't do that thing where he just like flips a James Bond ejector seat and they fly off. He deals with, he never gets them off. He needs Diana to come in there and fight him yeah. off. I kind of like that he struggled. Yes, and even with his fancy toys. It's wonderful toys. It's his crazy like spider mobile and all that, right? He yeah. is. He's not as nimble and agile as all these other kind of powered characters, right? Yeah, he needs the rest of the team. Yeah, which is good. I mean, it kind of makes sense. He's the elder statesman there. He's the grizzled old vet, right? Right. So that puts the total number of kills for Batfleck, right? About 86-ish. But if we're saying direct, right, and creatures he chose to end, we'll say 53 is his kill count. Wow. Okay. Across the DCEU. All right. Sounds good. Let's let's move on to that other uh, beautiful slab of uh, muscle and jaw. Henry Cavill, Superman, coming in 
hot in Man of Steel. Okay, and I mean all meanings of hot. Okay, and all meanings of coming. <laughs> hey yo! <laughs> Show that Peter Parker clip, baby. <laughs> so starting with, right, like kind of one of his seminal moments, speaking of coming, okay. Um, uh, you know, <laughs> a formative moment, if you will, for him was when Pa Kent, right, Jonathan Kent, they're caught in that freeway twister out of nowhere, uh-huh. right? and. Superman, he's like, oh, get get mom to safety, right? Superman's just chilling under the overpass while Pa Kent waves goodbye before he gets swept up is, in a twister. Stop. About that. <laughs> Fuck. You know, super speed, building to fly. There's a 150 yards between them, right? He could have covered that distance, no problem. Yeah, that was a layup. But he chose not to, I think out of fear of revealing himself yeah pa Kent said let me die <laughs> rather than maybe one of these kids accidentally seeing you move fast <laughs> also low key the whole reason uh kevin costner or pa Kent ran back into the twister was to save a dog i'm sorry my dude i love animals i've got i've got a tiny pug uh sleeping in the room next to me right now bro your life is worth more than that dog Right? You better cover that pug's ears. You don't want to hear him saying like, "Uh uh-oh, Zach does not value me that much. I'm less than a parademon. You can kiss my furry little butt. There are people I would consider taking a bullet for. I can't think of a single animal I would take a bullet for or take a twister for in this case. I mean, hey, it's a trope, right? Like everyone (laughs) always goes back for the dog. Dogs, it's seeing a dog get hurt in a movie is more painful, I think, than seeing a person get hurt in a movie. It's just, it's a weird thing. People love dogs. Oh, of course, right? And the, the whole saves the cat moment, right? It's such yeah. a trope oh, yeah, that's in a big movies. Quarter. Which it should be save the dog. No one gives a shit. Maybe that's why, is because people are like, why would you save a cat? Oh, God. <laughs> cats are great, but like cats don't care about you once you save them. Dog, you don't, you could just like look at a dog and smile and they'll be forever loyal to you. Dogs are so much better. Also, we both know cats are too smart. No cat would ever get caught in a car about to get destroyed. Like that cat <laughs> oh, yeah, would yeah, be yeah. gone. <laughs> Sam! That cat would be kicking a little kid out from underneath the underpass. Get out of here. Um, dogs are dumb. I, I love dogs. I'm a dog person, but they're dumb. Okay, so there's that one. And I will say that that is a a death of inaction, right? And it was a conscious choice. It's an almost direct inaction, right? He chose to do nothing when he definitely could have. And that was an important part of kind of the genesis of this version of Superman. Jump forward in time a little bit to that battle of Smallville, Uh, the kind of the gas station, right? We get our first kind of direct interaction with Superman and and the the Zod squad. And it (laughs) seemed like about four civilians are in that gas station are in cars. There's like two bicycles right next to the gas station, which uh, makes oh you think no. that maybe there was two little kids in there, you know, buying yeah. a soda pop and some Charleston cheese. <laughs> and then their eyeballs popped from the extreme heat. <laughs> yeah, and then they, they melt into a pile of goo. And of course, there was a military presence there, and the, the Zod Squad are yes. knocking down helicopters and, and all this kind uh-huh. of stuff. One of the guys that uh, rips off a pilot's head mid flight, and then you see his blood spray everywhere. Oh. We talked about that in the breakdown. That one was tough to watch. <laughs> yeah. Brutes. But of course, that's not Superman directly doing that. Though you could argue right. if Superman hadn't discovered that scout ship, the Zod Squad wouldn't have come. Yeah. If Superman wasn't there in Smallville, you know, they would. those other Kryptonians would not be there, right? So it is an right, indirect right. thing. And if you say that like, indirect. well, we can't give him all those bodies, but he probably deserves some percentage of them. So let's let's just throw out the number nine. Right, that's some that's maybe forty okay. percent of all the deaths that happen in that sequence. And yeah, I mean, okay. he didn't kill any of those people directly, but like his presence caused all of them to die. And he did, he did work really hard to save people. Like he saved yes. a, a ton of lives. So like maybe we he get some extra credit there. He definitely gets some extra credit there. But he also could have moved the battle somewhere else. He didn't have to fight in his buddy Pete Ross's IHOP. <laughs> he could have done it in the Waffle House, which is not going to have as many people. 
and yes. the people who are in the Waffle House, expendable. That's absolutely right. It's it's out on the edge of town by the adult bookstore, you know, <laughs> and that shady liquor store. Nobody should be there. <laughs> so it's strip row, yeah. <laughs> so then um, the, the next two we're going to talk about are going to be, I think, even more controversial than that. That Kryptonian Genesis Chamber. All right. Oh, right. Uh, so the, the <laughs> ship that Superman kind of goes Captain Marvel on and destroys, we know from that opening sequence with Russell Crowe, Jarrell on Krypton, right? That like within that Genesis chamber, there are these like kind of uh, Brussels sprout esque pods or stalks with these uh -huh. these like pods on them, right? That that birth Kryptonians, and so we know that those things were also in that ship that Superman destroys. And you can kind of do the math. There seem to be in that opening sequence, there seem to be about 26 stalks-ish, or how many you can see. And each of them have about 30, let's say like cryogenic chambers, egg chambers, whatever on them. So if you do that math, that's about 780 not quite born yet Kryptonians that Superman consciously yeah. chooses to kill. He even says, Krypton had its chance. I'm not gonna let you Kryptonians survive. Yeah, you know, it's it's almost like the Ripley and Aliens moment. Like, she's popping all those eggs, and that's what Superman's doing there. He's just, like, using his heat vision the way she used the flamethrower. I think we can get those numbers because, like, when Russell Crowe dives into the Genesis Chamber, there's, like, a whole bunch of them. There's a bunch of those pools because that's, like, their home world. We can imagine that one of those pools was on that ship, but I think it's safe to assume that what we can see in one of those is probably, it's a standard size. They're an efficient culture. They probably make you know roughly the same amount because there's probably some algorithm that says you need this many in order to repopulate a world absolutely right whatever the kryptonian gross is right a dozen dozen kryptonian gross <laughs> now here's where another debatable thing is right these things are are not fertilized because superman has the codex right that's what they they need him to be able to Oh yeah, it's in his cells, yeah. Yeah, right, so when when does life begin, Eric? Oh, well definitely not before uh, conception. I mean, the people are arguing that, say that you're baby killing every time you menstruate. Like that would be insane. Or like, I guess there are some people who say that masturbation is a sin. <laughs> uh, and guess who's not a member of that club? <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> and so I, I think, like, though he kind of killed 780 potential Kryptonians, I don't think you can really say they were a death, right? It's almost like yeah. maybe you could say he neutered the potential, right? Maybe he snipped the the nut sacks or the ovaries of uh, 780 worth of Kryptonians, right? Yeah, did Superman know that his father had encoded the, the codec into his cells? That's something that Zod and his scientists figured out, but like, as far as Superman was concerned, he knew there was a Genesis chamber on there. He didn't know that whether those pods were fertilized or not. To be willing to kill 780 babies is almost as bad as actually doing it, Zach. That's true. And we, we, we have no idea how much he knew about what was on that ship, right? Like, we have to assume he was down to stop the Kryptonian threat to Earth, but he didn't necessarily know the ramifications of, like, what's in every closet right. on that ship, right? Zod should have told him in that moment, there's a daycare center. There are children <laughs> on the aircraft. And he's just like, I don't care, not had its chance. Oh, we have a school here. There should have been some like uh, some baby carriages, maybe like a cradle uh -huh. or two, just sitting around. Just some and <laughs> some Fisher like, huh? Price toys. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. See, see. <laughs> some doodles on the walls that are you know toddler height. <laughs> but they're like Kryptonian doodles, so they're like badass, covered in crazy armor for no reason. Uh, okay, so. Though you could say, you know, 780, we're not going to count it, right? There's there's too many ifs okay, uh, fair. there. I'm not yeah. going to count it on Superman's kill count, at least his direct kill count, right? But now, okay. the big shebang, okay, the Battle of Metropolis. Oh, One of the most boy. controversial <laughs> things about the DCEU, double or triple 9-11 right there in the middle of Metropolis. <laughs> at least, yeah. Oh, hardcore, right? Okay, so... We're not gonna put the bodies on Superman of like when the Genesis engine kind of like blows up stuff initially. Obviously that was totally Oh yeah, the, the world engine is flattening. Yeah, yes. Superman did everything he could to stop that, yeah. Right, right. So we're not gonna 
put all of that on him, certainly. Now, again, just like in the Battle of Smallville, he probably deserves a little bit of that credit because they wouldn't be doing that if Superman wasn't on Earth, right? Curiosity kills the everyone. <laughs> That's right. That's why I have chosen to never be curious. I'll live forever. Uh, but now, <laughs> especially, you could put a lot more onto Superman for when he chooses to fight Zod in the middle of Metropolis, right? And they're smashing through buildings, yeah. they're collapsing skyscrapers, right? And we can see, because we see Lois Lane, right right over there, there's people kind of still in the wreckage. We can assume maybe some of Metropolis was able to evacuate, but like um, a major, we know that in the DCEU, Metropolis has 11 million citizens. To get 11 million people out of a major metropolitan oh, area. impossible. In I mean, the middle of the days. day with no warning. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, we yeah. know these office buildings are filled with people, right? Even if some of them were able to get out, you know, some people got out of the towers in 9-11, but lots of people did not. So we have to assume, in fact, a, a consulting firm that specializes in like damage assessment, watched this movie and guessed there was about 379,000 people killed overall. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably right. I mean, there were dozens of skyscrapers that collapsed onto thousands of people running around in the streets. That makes sense, unfortunately. Yeah, and I mean, pedestrians, people in cars trying to get out, right? Who knows, like, you know, a couple buses here or there, maybe even like a collapsed subway system. It's insane. Yeah. And that's not to mention, not to go too dark, right? But a lot of the people that died from 9-11 died from uh, diseases, asbestos. I don't I don't oh, know uh, yeah. what the OSHA codes are for Metropolis, right? But you have to imagine there's going to be so much PTSD. We, we know at least one guy was paralyzed, and that came into play later, right? Yeah, that's right. That was a big deal. And that led to so many more deaths. And didn't Zack Snyder say there was like about 5,000 people died in Metropolis? But that is crazy. That's like when the MCU was like, oh, like, a couple hundred people died in the battle in New York. It's like, no, directors, you have a choice to put what number there. Just round up. Just be realistic with how many people yes. died. And no one's going to fault you for the number adding an extra zero to it, you know? Yes. If, if you choose to collapse buildings, then it's on you, okay? They could just be punching each other in the parking lot, you know, and whacking each other with stop <laughs> signs or something like that. But you wanted them to <laughs> smash through buildings, okay? And, yes, and here's yes. where it's heaviest on Superman's head. He chose to fight that dude in the middle of Metropolis, right? Superman 2, going back to Christopher Reeves, the first time we kind of saw Zod on screen, right? Oh, yeah. He drew the Zod squad out to like uh, middle of nowhere to fight them. So there's not as many Yeah, that was a choice. Right? Superman could have done the same thing. Hell, both these dudes can fly. They could just go up like a quarter mile under the sky and punch each other silly. But right, they chose to right. slam each other through buildings. At any point, Superman could have like used his intellect and like, hey Zod, let's make a deal and we'll make a deal 20 miles away or, or whatever. It'd be like a defensive lineman saying like, you'll be able to push me back into the goal line and then I'll tackle you. It's like the whole point is it's to stop the forward momentum to do further damage that's that you're trying to protect that's the one task at hand is to protect lives and you're thinking that the best way to do it is to like slowly jump in front of that LexCorp semi truck that he uh, like you know, just grab him and, and fly him into space yes. do everything you can to keep that fight on the moon absolutely and and you know I think the defenders of Superman in this situation would say that he was trying to save all of Earth because Zod was basically going to wipe out everybody if he got his way if he wasn't defeated but uh -huh. I think I think that's part of the the conflict of a hero right like batman could kill joker the first time he comes across him kill you. and thus save the lives of everybody that joker will ever kill yep. but because he's conflicted he has to take the high road he has to be the better person right instead he locks up joker knowing that he'll get out in a year and probably kill a couple more innocent people <laughs> but here superman does not take that tack and instead he says actually some people are going to die in Metropolis, but it's for the greater good. But he's willing to accept casualties. I yeah. don't know. We could go back and forth it, forever. It just doesn't right? really seem to bother him that much. <laughs> I think that's a big <laughs> thing. He's more upset by killing Zod than like thousands of people dying. And of course, right, that battle ends with a very direct kill. The old next snapperoonie. He gets a point for that one for sure. Oh, that's a that's a big old fat point. Okay, now flash forward, <laughs> Batman vs Superman. There is one very direct kill early in that movie, the kind of Kenyan warlord that's taken Lois Lane hostage, right? Uh, Superman smashes him through a wall, right? That dude's definitely dead. Poor guy. Yeah, Again, that's no way he lived. <laughs> we find out he was kind of a stooge or a patsy, right? Being set up. And then in the nightmare sequence we talked about before, we know Batman had a lot of kills there, but of course, so did Superman. We see him directly like 
like, you know, laser vision, half a dozen dudes in half. And in theory, all those goons that are there, you know, they have his emblem on their shoulder, right? They're there on his behalf, under his orders, right? So you can estimate maybe there's about 30 people that either he directly or his goons kill in that sequence. But again, it was all a dream. So we won't count it. But again, eh, still shady, still questionable. We're still visually seeing Superman kill people on a screen and the shock that that entails. Okay, now, flashing forward to that Capitol building sequence, the guy armed in the mm -hmm. rubble of the Battle of Metropolis. He's got an explosive wheelchair given to him by Lex Luthor. We did a little estimating math here, but let's say about 220 people. Right, we see all the people in that kind of meeting chamber. You have to assume there's offices all around there. I mean, it's a gigantic explosion, right? And you had press, yeah. and lawmakers, and like protesters, all Staff. kinds of people yeah. in there. So 220 seems like a pretty good number there for how many people die. Of course, not directly caused by Superman, but that dude was pissed at Superman. The meeting's taking place because of Superman. It's crowded because of Superman. I mean, there's a lot of Senate hearings in which it's like. You know, crickets. And especially, right, if Superman didn't show up, that dude wouldn't have set off the bomb, right? Because the bomb was intended right. to, to either kill Superman or more likely to kind of like set him up as a bad guy. Yeah, right? yeah. Lex wanted to set up Superman as like a, a further enemy. He was working both sides to try to get Superman and, and Batman to hate each other more and more and more and more. Yes. It's complicated. It's a very complicated, it, very complicated. scheme. Too big for little minds. But, you know, so that, let's say those are indirect kills. And then finally, end of the movie, the Doomsday fight, he does successfully kill Doomsday. So that's a direct Yeah, he gets him kill uh dies in the process so you know could have been a little more efficient there but hey you know <laughs> got the job done yeah and then finally in justice league superman's not there for most of the movie of course uh he gets violent when he gets revived and he certainly wrecks a cop car or two right and kind of beats up on the justice league but doesn't kill anybody and he also misses most of that final sequence when all those parademons are getting killed so he doesn't really that's right doesn't even really kill any of the parademons he's he's pretty inactive in yeah. that movie so no kills for him almost useless we did separate <laughs> those three mother boxes so great nerfed he did the equivalent of like, hey, Superman, can you open this jar of pickles, please? <laughs> Great, thanks, the world saved. If only opening jars of pickles could save the world, guys, I would have saved so many worlds, okay? <laughs> I have very few tangible <laughs> skills in life, but I can open a jar of pickles. Final tally here. And again, I talked about different categories of kills. We mentioned some that we're not really gonna count. So this is, this is the final Zach approved, boom, boom, kill counts here for Superman and Batman in the DCEU. Direct kills of Batman, 53, especially if we're counting parademons. Direct kills of Superman, assuming we're not counting weird fetus pods or people in buildings that get collapsed on top of them or whatever. He's only got three. Superman only has three kills, really. Direct confirmed kills, the Kenyan Warlord, Zod, and Doomsday. And really, you can make an argument, all three of those are pretty bad dudes, probably deserve to die. Yeah. So I think, you know, in, in our standings, uh, Batman way deadlier directly, Superman, way deadlier indirectly he's over ninety-five thousand. we're gonna attribute all of them yeah 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 that's an important distinction i guess we can say that superman might be deadlier but batman is more of a murderer it's the difference between uh you know jason Voorhees and the hulk the hulk has yes a lot of people have died because of the hulk but well i guess you could argue jason Voorhees doesn't even know he's killing that many people there's also estimates that jason Voorhees has killed thousands and thousands so maybe he's a bad example <laughs> that guy's done a lot <laughs> he's Killed you can flash back to the video you made with Tommy where he used famous horror movie villains as yeah, yeah. his kill count. I think Jason Voorhees was the top level. Uh, well, thank you for breaking that all down. And uh, let us know what uh, kills you think should be counted and shouldn't be counted because there, you know, there's a lot of skulls. A lot of skulls get cracked <laughs> to this movie. But we want to thank some people who helped us make this episode. First off, thanks to our sponsor, Full Sail University. So Full Sail University, Zach and I know that because it's located just outside Orlando, Florida. We had a lot of friends who went to Full Sail. It's this great institution. 
accredited. It offers associates, bachelors, and master's degrees designed for the world of entertainment, media, arts, technology. Uh, their online and on-campus programs are accelerated so you can earn your degree in half the time. We know a couple of people who are now like working as editors, as filmmakers, uh, in all kinds of creative industries here in LA who they all went to full sale. It's just kind of interesting to be like, what? Wow, wow, what are they doing there that, that's working so great? So full sale degrees are immersive but hands-on. So you can learn your craft using the same tools and technologies found in the industry you're studying. Full sale grads are able to come back and audit classes throughout their careers and receive lifetime career development support. That's awesome. Uh, very few other institutions would, would let you do that. That's awesome. Full Sail grads have gone on to do big things from mixing hit records, working on major Hollywood films like we were talking about, to winning Oscars, winning Grammys. Uh, me, when I checked it out, I was most intrigued by their online bachelor's in digital cinematography degree with its courses in directing and film criticism. Lots of cool stuff they're teaching there. To learn more about Full Sail's programs as well as potential scholarship opportunities, visit fullsail.edu slash big question. We also want to thank our friends at ExpressVPN for sponsoring this episode. So when you use the bathroom, you always close the door behind you, right, Zach? At least 50% of the time. Well, you should do it 100% of the time because using the internet without ExpressVPN is like going to the bathroom and not closing the door behind you. And 50% of the time, bad things can come in and do <laughs> bad, bad things. Thanks to you. Your internet service provider knows every single website you visit, folks. And what's worse is they can sell this information to ad companies, tech giants, dark forces out there in the world who will use your data to target you in dark, scary ways. ExpressVPN puts a stop to this. It creates a secure encrypted tunnel between your device and the internet so that your online activity cannot be seen by anyone. I use ExpressVPN on all my devices. It works on everything, phones, laptops, even routers. So everyone who shares your Wi-Fi can still be protected even if they don't have ExpressVPN. Isn't that great? We're just trying to do as much for as many people as we can. And the best part is, using ExpressVPN is easy as closing the bathroom door, which it should be easier, but Zach, I guess, I guess it's kind of hard. But ExpressVPN makes it really easy. All you gotta do is yeah, fire up the app, click one button, you're protected. ExpressVPN is the world's number one rated VPN by CNET, Wired, The Verge, and countless others. So if you're like me and believe your online activity is your business, which it is for most of us nowadays, secure yourself by visiting expressvpn.com slash big Q today. Use my exclusive link. That's expressvpn.com slash big Q and you can get an extra three months for free. That's expressvpn.com vpn.com slash big Q. Okay, we have time for one more uh, with a box of scraps question. And this question this week is, do you have a terrible drinking story? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, I think anybody that's ever had a drink has a terrible drinking story. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it comes with the territory. Well, I'll, I'll lead here. And this is, I, I don't have a great tolerance for anything. I enjoy sip of alcohol, maybe other legal substances, but I've never been able to handle like very much of those things, right? And that's okay, because I, I know my limits and I usually am good with them, but occasionally I make a mistake. And one time that comes to mind, it's about 2009-ish, I had not been in LA that long, and I went with two friends to a party at the uh, USC Law School. We had a friend who was going to USC Law School. So we went down mm -hmm. there, fun kind of party. It was kind of dying down. We got there kind of late, but they had a big bowl of sangria. Eric, you know this about me. I love fruit. <laughs> Not the alcoholic component. There's <laughs> fruit in this beverage. <laughs> yes, so they made a big, like a giant punch bowl worth of sangria and it had like diced up apples and like pineapple and grapes and all this kind of stuff. Maybe some melon in there, you know, whatever. It was a fancy kind of sangria. And I love whole fruit, you know, chunks of fruit, whatever. And so I was like, oh, I, I didn't know anybody at this party. It was kind of low energy anyway. So I kind of posted up by the sangria bowl. And I'm just kind of popping out little chunks of fruit, <laughs> snacking on those. You know, I'd already had a drink or two, so I didn't need to drink that much more. Well, lesson out there for people that are not aware of the powers of sangria. The oh. alcohol <laughs> collects in the fruit. <laughs> Oh, it soaks in? The, you yes. can't just eat the, yes. <laughs> the so cherries? Yes, and it's kind of masked yeah. by the flavor of the apple or the grape or the whatever. Oh, so yeah, I was yeah, eating yeah. basically like shots of booze while I was snacking. Oh, yeah, it's like jello fruit. shots that you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and it just kind of, and, but you're unaware because you're used to like, oh, I could drink 
two or three drinks, great. But you don't realize how much you're consuming when you're just snacking on fruit. So anyways, flash forward, an hour or so goes by, we're gonna head home. And so my friend is driving, luckily I'm, I'm not driving in this story, and I'm in the back seat, mm -hmm. he, he and his girlfriend are in the front two seats, and we're on the 110 freeway going through downtown LA when it hits. Okay, and oh. I get I get the spins, I'm nauseous. I already kind of get car sick even when I'm stone cold sober. So things go mm -hmm. bad. We're going down the freeway like late at night, so there's no traffic, I'm probably doing 60. I just real quick have to roll the window down and hurl on the freeway. <laughs> but luckily I feel a little bit better. 15 minutes later, we get home. <laughs> As I get out of the car, I realize that the entire back half of the car, there's just a giant bright red streak <laughs> down the side of the car. Because of course you're driving fast enough, you know, all the vomit kind of slaps back in the car. And it was all bright red because all this sangria. So that's my uh, drinking story. It looks like painted. blood. It's like this person sideswiped a bike messenger. <laughs> yeah, all the people that were driving next to us on the freeway were like, what happened to this car? Bless my friend, he got out the hose, hosed it down, and I was fine the next day, so. That, that's amazing. Um, I've had a lot of terrible drinking stories because, uh, you know, we went to a state school. It's kind of a party school. Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! It was one of the schools. I, was Florida ever number one on the number one party school? Usually Penn State was number one. I, but it usually made the top ten, I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. So we would do a lot of drinking. And then coming out of college, I still kind of had that college mindset of like, I love getting drunk. I love getting hammered with my friends. Wild night. Yeah. But I was never that. So I would brag to my older brother. I'm like, you should have seen me in college. Like I was, I would get drunk all the time. I'd get, oh, I got, I would tell him these like glory stories that were like, he's probably just rolling his eyes. like, all right. Cause he was like in a frat. Like my brother is, uh, he's like in the Navy. Like he, he's, he definitely like puts him down. I went on a trip to Japan. Uh, he was living in Japan at the time. So I visited him. It was awesome. It was, a, it was such a great trip. Uh, and he showed me Tokyo. Um, and Tokyo has a part of Tokyo called the Roppongi district. And it's known sure. as like, it's where you go drinking. It's like, uh, it, it's very westernized there. It's where a lot of like the businessmen and, and western tourists will go because there's just like a ton of uh, bars like a ton of whiskey bars because whiskey's a huge deal in japan it's it's it like rivals scotland in terms of like where you can get like the the finest whiskeys but they're all about the, it's not like Rapongi is where you're gonna find nice whiskey it's where you just find you know they just have crappy whiskey bars it's like bourbon street or something right yeah man yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so he takes me to this bar and he's like all right if you're such a big drinker uh and he takes me to this place and all it is is a shot bar but we're there for probably probably an hour but it felt like three hours because every time someone rings a gong it means that uh whoever did that bought a shot for everyone in the bar it's like super cheap shots and you have to do a shot or it's bad luck so like really the truth is of like all my stories from college i was drinking the lightest beer in the world i wasn't drinking hard liquor if i did it was super like watered down and i had done one of them and then i like fell asleep and took a nap and that was enough <laughs> here i was like oh my god i'm gonna die um i've never blacked out so hard at some point when i was given a shot i would just hand it to this these dudes next to me and like later my brother was like yeah you were talking to these like businessmen in their 40s <laughs> for like uh you know 20 minutes and you were singing songs with them and i was like i don't remember any of this and i don't remember anything after that bar we went to three more bars that night Three more bars. And I don't remember any of them. He's like, yeah, at one point we got this like street food and then he started eating me and my buddy's street food. And I'm like, what? And he's like, yeah, you kept ordering more drinks. And we're like, I guess he can handle it. And I was sick the whole rest of the trip. Ugh. Like, I, we we went to other, there's so many cool places to get drinks in Tokyo. There's this uh, area called the Golden Guy District where there are these tiny little closet sized bars and you just hop. You go from bar to bar to bar, you pay a, a small little cover and then you just drink one what, what of the two beers that they have there. Um, and I, I couldn't have more than one drink the whole time. And he's like, are you okay? You're not talking to anyone. I'm like, I'm still sick. <laughs> I never want to tweak again. <laughs> I'm too much a baby.
<laughs> but like, yeah, uh, there we went to this robot bar in Tokyo, which if you've been to Tokyo, this is the thing you do. It's just crazy. Like it's a robot restaurant. They have like these robot fights and they have these girls who have keg backpacks and they come around and they fill up your beer. And she hits me. She's like, you want beer? And I'm like, no, stay away <laughs> from me. Um, uh, yeah, careful. Beware the Rapungi whiskey bars because they'll get you. There's a, uh, a wrestling tag team called Rapungi Vice because they used to wrestle in Japan. And that was I might have wrestled one of them that night. I wouldn't know. <laughs> yeah. You might be married to one of them. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is our show. Thank you so much for joining us uh, this week for the big question. Thank you, Zach, for breaking down those numbers for Batman and Superman from the DCU. Fascinating insights there. And, and you can send us your questions on Discord using uh, our Discord server. It's a great community, but it's exclusive to patrons. You can become a patron of New Rockstars at patreon.com slash New Rockstars. You can also get audio versions of the show by subscribing to our New Rockstars Big Question podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. And of course, you can send us your questions on Twitter. Just use the hashtag Big Question. We're more likely to see it on Discord, though. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at EA Boss. Follow Zach Huddleston at Z Huddleston. And you can follow New Rockstars on social. Subscribe here on YouTube to get too much information on all the stuff you care about. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>